So, you have a movie for me? Yes, sir, I do. So, I was thinking we could get The Rock to star as Black Adam. Oh, which one? Which rock? Yeah. It, the. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson. Oh, okay, you know, that makes a lot more sense. I thought there was like about a rock collection you had or something. You thought I wanted to make a stop motion Black Adam movie starring a rock from my rock collection? Listen, I'm very embarrassed and if we could just move on, I'd appreciate it. I guess. So anyway, there's gonna be this evil king 5,000 years ago in this place called Kandak, right? Right. And he makes this freaking crown that makes you powerful using a rare mineral called Eternium. Those all seem like they might be words. Sure. Thank you. And this little kid wants to oppose him and so some wizard give him the power of Shazam and he becomes a big old hero. Oh boy, that's good. That's what we want in this movie. Actually, no, because Black Adam is not a hero. Oh, yeah, that's right. And so how are we going to show that he's not a hero? He's going to say it constantly. Oh, my God. Anyway, later in the movie, there's going to be a big reveal where we find out that this kid actually transferred the powers to his father and then was killed. So the father became Black Adam. Oh, they killed Black Adam, son. That is a big reveal. I'm going to put that in the trailer. Oh, please don't do that. That's gonna be good in the trailer. All right, so anyway, 5,000 years later, Kondak is now being oppressed by this gang called the Inter Gang. That's a terrible gang name. Well, I don't know what to tell you, sir. They're good at gang stuff, not creative writing. That's fair. And so this lady, Adriana, wants to stop the gang from getting this crown, so she goes to get it before them. How does she find it? By driving up to the entrance of this cave and going in, and it's just kind of, it's floating there. Oh, so how is this lost for five millennia? Don't worry about it. But then some Inter Gang people show up, so she says some words that make Black Adam show up. Oh boy, here we go. And so then he shows up and starts killing all the bad guys. Cool. Which is a big deal, you know, because heroes, they don't do that. They don't kill. No, they pretty much all do. Hey, shut up. So he's not a hero. He's pretty much a villain if you think about it. He's such a bad guy. Is he killing random people? No, just like mean evil guys that directly attack him. So he's pretty much a hero. No, he's not. No, he's not. Because he, remember, he's going to keep saying he's not. So he's not. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, no. Okay. That's my bad. So does he speak in like an ancient language? language or something? No, he's just gonna speak in Dwayne Johnson's normal American accent. How does that work? That's actually a really good question. It's kind of a combination of magic and Dwayne Johnson probably not being able to do an accent for a full movie. That makes sense. So anyway, then Amanda Waller's gonna send the Justice Society to stop Black Adam. And so who's the Justice Society exactly? Oh, well, there's Hawkman, and he has, like, this long historied friendship with Dr. Fate, who loves to dramatically remove his helmet. That does sound fun. He does it in every single scene he's in. And then there's also a guy, Adam Smith, Masher and this girl Cyclone. And what's their deal? Ah, uh, well they're in the movie as well. Oh, sick! And so then a big chunk of the movie is gonna be the Justice Society following Black Adam around and being like, heroes don't kill people and he'll be like, I'm not a hero. He freaking loves saying that. He loves it. He really does. And we're also gonna find out that that Eternium stuff can actually like weaken and injure Black Adam. Oh boy, I bet that's gonna come into play later. Nope, and then so also the leader of the bad guys, Ishmael, he's trying to get the crown. He wants it real bad. Very real. Rude. And at a certain point, they actually kidnap Adriana's son. Uh-oh, kidnapping. Yeah, Black Adam tried to stop it, but he failed, and so, you know, they got him. Oh, he didn't get there in time? No, he did, but instead of taking him from the apartment he was in and flying him far away, he just flew him to a different floor in the same building, so they, you know, they took him. Uh, yeah, it was a decent strategy, but I could see why that totally didn't work at all. Yeah, and then they catch up with this bad guy who fires a bullet at the kid, but then Black Adam jumps in and stops the bullet, but makes a big explosion at the same time. Oh, do people die? Only the bad guys and the kid is kind of unconscious. Wow. So then Black Adam turns himself in and gives up his powers. What? Why? Well, because of how horribly that just went. He saved the kid and got rid of the bad guys. That went fine. Well, he's gonna turn himself in because we're at a point in the movie where something like that should probably happen. Oh, okay, gotcha. So they lock him up in this underwater prison inside a water tank with a thing covering his mouth because if he says Shazam, he turns back into Black Adam. Feels like the Justice Society is gonna need his help immediately. But then the Justice Society needs his help immediately! Oh my god! Yeah, see, they're in their fancy jet, and the jet detects that the demon Sabak has appeared. Their aircraft identifies demons by name? Yeah, sure, okay, and so it turns out the bad guy actually wanted Black Adam to kill him, because that's what would turn him into this big, powerful demon being. Uh-oh. And then Dr. Fate is gonna sacrifice himself. Oh, why? Because I was thinking of Pierce Brosnan for the role, and he'll probably only sign on for one movie. That makes sense. But before he dies, he telepathically helps Black Adam 
had him escape from his little water pod. Uh, so all he's got to do is say Shazam and he'll get his powers back? Exactly. So he's got to fight all these guards and then get to the door of this prison thing and then swim up to the surface and remove his mouth thing and say Shazam. Why doesn't he just remove the thing from his mouth and say Shazam as soon as he gets out of the pod? Because this is slightly more dramatic. So then he does say it and he flies in to help. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Wow. But then also Adriana's son has to convince a bunch of people to rise up and go fight because the whole city's going nuts. Man, it's going to be hard for a child to get the attention of a bunch of screaming adults. Actually, it's going to be super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, see, he stands up on a little thing and talks to all of them at like a normal speaking volume and they all stop what they're doing and listen to him. And that works? It does, yeah. And so then all these people are like, hey, let's listen to this very quiet kid and rise up together. And what are they all going to go fight exactly? Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention there are skeleton zombies now. What? Yeah, 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 some little skeleton zombies showed up, so they all gotta, gotta fight those and regain the, the control of the city from the skeleton zombies that appeared. Isn't the city being run by a gang? Wouldn't it make more sense to rise up against them? Well, they're human, so that could get messy if they die, so no, it's gonna be a soulless CGI army, so there's no, like, moral implications when they kill these beings. Smart. So Adriana and some other characters are gonna be fighting these skeleton zombies, and then the kid rounds the corner on a skateboard with all these people behind him and he's like, yo, mom! Oh, cool 90s kids are tight. It's not the 90s, sir. He's just a cool skateboard kid who says, yo, mom, and wisecracks with Black Adam like he's John Connor from Terminator 2. That movie from the early 90s? Yes. All right. And so then Black Adam kills the demon guy and everybody's very happy about it. Amazing. And then in a post credit scene, Amanda Waller sends Superman to talk to Black Adam. She can send Superman places? I guess so, sir. And so what does Superman say? He says, let's open Openly talk about this scene in interviews so people come see this movie. I love that. I love that. And so, yeah, that's about it. What do you think? Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. I say we get the ball rolling on this right now. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. We're gonna fast track this one. Hi everybody, Ryan George here. Thanks for watching that pitch meeting. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it made you laugh. I hope it made you cry. I hope it made you cry. You hearing me? I hope you cried. All right, I'll see you around. Go wipe those tears away. <laughs>